Podcast. Hi, and welcome to Deep Leadership. I'm your host, John Rennie. Well, I hope all is well with you today. It is Saturday morning, and this episode is brought to you by our new sponsor, Jeremy Clevenger Fitness, who we featured on episode 145. If you haven't heard that episode yet, I encourage you to go back and take a listen. I have another great show lined up for you, but before we get started, I just want to remind you to take a look at the leadership books on my website. Harry Truman famously once said that all leaders are readers. So if you're not reading leadership books today, I highly encourage you get started. Now, I've written three leadership books on my website, and I recommend you start with I Have the Watch first. It's filled with 22 short stories that will help you become a leader worth following. It's a quick read, and most people finish it in less than three hours. It's available in Kindle and on Audible, so you can listen to it in the car or while working out. And a Spanish version is also in the works. So check out all my books on either Amazon or my website, johnsrenny.com. Also, I just wanted to mention that Deep Leadership is now ranked in the top 2.5% most popular shows out of 3 million podcasts globally, according to Listen Score. We're also closing in on the top 100 management podcasts in the U.S. So I wanted to thank each and every one of you for listening in every week and sharing these episodes with your friends. You have helped this podcast grow into a top performing show. So thank you very much. Well, that is it. Today, we're going to be talking about virtual presentations, and my guest is Jack Milner. Jack is a comedy writer and award-winning communication coach. He helps leaders take dry, technical, and otherwise boring information and make it clear, concise, memorable, and engaging. Now, if you think you've mastered the virtual presentation, think again. According to today's guest, you don't know Jack. This was a fun conversation. So, Are you ready to dive in? Let's get started. Welcome to Deep Leadership. Leadership is a people business. That's the philosophy of your podcast host, John Rennie. As a former Cold War submarine officer who spent 20 plus years leading businesses in corporate America before starting his own manufacturing business, he knows that leadership matters. Leadership matters. Are you ready for some real-world, actionable advice from John, as well as his expert guests? I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. The show starts right now. Welcome to the Deep Leadership Podcast. Today, I'm joined by Jack Milner. Jack is an award-winning communications coach. He has trained the world's best-selling professional speakers and provides organizations with the tools to influence, persuade, and engage whether through storytelling, presenting, or communicating with teams. He's the author of a new book called Virtual Presentation Mastery, Tips from the Coach to Some of the World's Best Speakers and Me, and we'll get into that. COVID has forever forever changed the way we communicate. I'm excited to have Jack on the show to help us understand how to become better virtual presenters. So Jack, welcome to the show. Uh, Thank you very much, John. Lovely to be here. Yeah, it's nice to meet you, and I'm excited about this topic because I think uh, the world has changed, and we have to change with it as leaders. So uh, I'm I'm looking forward to learning from your expertise in this area. So the first thing I wanted to start off with is how does a comedy writer, performer, and director become an award-winning communication coach? What was the shift? How did that uh, How did that transition throughout your career? Yeah, well, it was it was it was accidental, accidental, John. So I, I, you know, r- ran um, a comedy company, did uh, comedy performances, directing and stuff, and I also used to do comedy improvisation workshops. And I, this is a long time ago, and I did this for a while, and then a venue said to me, Jack, we'd like you to run a, a stand up workshops. And at the time, I said, well, I don't think you can teach stand-up. You know, you're either funny or you're not sort of thing. And then they said, well, we'll pay you twice as much as normal. <laughs> and, I, and I said, well, clearly you can teach stand-up. And and I found that you could really by just doing three things, which actually I do in my workshops now, which is help people take away the stuff that gets in the way, give them some tools, mostly actually to build confidence, and then make sure it was fun. And in the UK at the time, there were loads of people doing this in the US, but in the UK at the time, there was hardly anyone doing it. So very quickly, I was working with the National Theatre, Channel 4, uh, ITV, English National Opera, etc. Uh, and that raised my profile. And in turn, it was businesses who came to me. Uh, in fact, one of the first companies was uh, Citigroup, 
in London, and they came and said, look, can you work with our analysts? Because we want them to be less boring. <laughs> and and so I really that's it was the it was business seeing the link between stand-up improvisation or the, the writing stuff and business, you know, what comedy stuff and business communication. Mm, interesting. Long before me. Yeah. So your your company is Stand Up and Deliver, which I see the logo on the screen. Um, what is it that you do? Like what do you do to help leaders? What what do leaders and companies come to you trying to fix or trying to do differently? Uh, usually, usually, obviously, they're coming because they want to be uh, better as speakers or pitching or whatever, you know, that communication stuff. But it, why they come to me in particular, I guess, is because they want a bit of that, uh, that more modern, natural, human uh approach that you that a stand-up typically has so they're not always in fact quite frequently they're not particularly looking to be that funny and actually in business you know i think being playful and occasionally humorous is probably enough actually for most you, you know you don't need to be isn't if you want to see a comedian go and see a comedian um but they come for that yeah that the way that a comedian can connect with an audience break stories down into something short succinct and punchy it's it's that side of things interesting and, you know we talked about it a little early before we started the the recording but mm. what you know i spent 22 years in corporate and I, and I saw a lot of really bad uh speeches and I'm, we're not talking virtual we're talking you know in, in person but they were terrible i mean most senior managers were absolutely dreadful when it came to doing presentations and it was uh death by powerpoint uh and it was um you know slow and dry and uh humorless and um just everyone hated it uh so like so you you actually work with teams to try to take this dry technical like you talked about uh these analysts uh the, you know take this technical dry information but you try to you 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 help them make it more memorable and engaging so what are some things that you do like before we get into the virtual side if you just talk about presentations in general what are some some things that you work with to to make them more engaging and memorable i guess there's a few things but um there's some obvious ones which are not none of it's rocket science really so uh quite often i remember working with a guy who was who ran this big um uh car car uh rental organization but he did it for corporates massive corporates and he did the, he did his presentation to me and it was you know loads of slides and, and really quite dull. And I didn't understand it, to be honest. And so at the end of it, I said, so, you know, now you finished that, that it's quite interesting. So what was that, was that all about? And he went, well, it's this and this and this. And I said, so um, is what you do any good? Because I wasn't clear. And he went, oh, it's absolutely amazing. I've worked across the world in this sector. And we honestly, we are the best by a long way. It's amazing. And I said, none of that, none of that was in, <laughs> none of that stuff was in there. And he went, mm, is it a bit much to put it in, you know? <laughs> and then I, I sort of, there was a few of his team there. And I said, well, what do you think, guys? And they went, yeah. Put it. So it was, it was there. It was just that, 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 I guess the thing of, well, in business, can I really talk like, um, you know, I don't want to, do people down but could do i really want to talk like should i talk like a human being and so one exercise i do with people sometimes um and please interrupt me john sometimes i can just carry carry on um one exercise i do is to say okay well look um do the same do the same bit of your presentation again but now you're going to do it as though i'm 10 years old or 11 years old yeah yeah just and they'll start off and they'll often do quite corporate but a little bit simplified i say no no i, I have no idea what you're talking about I'm, a, I'm 11 really confused and that that forces them to really think about what they're saying really um 
take out all jargon, any jargon, and take their time and communicate. Mm. And it's something, it's the skill. They already have the skill. It's just something has got in the way. That's why, you know, I mentioned to helping people take this away the stuff that gets in the way. And then, and you know, then they'll start using analogy. They'll start using story. They'll start uh, listening as well because they're watching the person. Do they understand? Is it clear? And um, I think one of the biggest problems you have with any sort of big presentation or leadership presentation, but uh, particularly in virtual, is that we assume as as the speaker or as the leader, you know, you go, well, I am in charge. I'm here to share my vision, my strategy, my ideas. And they're very, very good indeed. And once I've shared it, that information has been has landed and is understood, and therefore it will happen. Mm. And I will leave and there'll be a round of applause. And it's unlikely anyone will disagree with me. And, and the job is done. But sadly, you know, and sadly, it, you've made a number of assumptions and it probably hasn't. Yeah. You know, yeah, that's and, exactly it. Yeah. I learned I learned that I was a plant, you know, basically running manufacturing plants for most of my corporate career. And I did monthly all employee meetings. So every month I spoke to a group of people that weren't interested in what I was talking about. So you you learn through, you know, years and years of of, of doing it is like, how do I connect with these people? How do I leave them with um, something that they're going to remember? But the other side of it is, uh, as you mentioned, communication with employees is, is, is you got to do it from multiple times in multiple dis- different formats. You don't just say it one and you're done. So it's, you know, it's got to be something that you communicate over and over again. If it's, if it's uh, your, your mission or, or, or your objective for the month or what have you, you got to do as many ways as you can. And speaking in front of a group is just one of the many tools a leader has. And I think you're right though. Some leaders think one and done, I've said my piece, you heard my, you know, carry out my mission and then they're yeah, off. Yeah. And, uh, but it takes a lot more than that. Uh, and I think you, you meant, you touched on something too, is being empathetic with your listeners and, and noticing the positive interactions. Are they nodding their head? Are they looking at you? Are they paying attention? Or are they looking down at their phone? Are they, uh, uh, in some cases, have they fallen asleep, which that happens a lot <laughs> too in corporate meetings. Yeah. 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 Well, let's um, like switching gears a little bit. Like, how has um, what have you seen? How how much has business communication changed now since we've gone through this COVID? And now we're in this post COVID world. How how has it changed? And um, and and what should we be, we be thinking about differently based on the fact that things have changed? Well, you know, I, I, certainly in the UK, and I'm guessing maybe even more so in, in the US with bigger distances, people just are really reluctant now to do a two or three hour commute for a one hour meeting. Yeah. I mean, that was quite common. You say, okay, um, it's important, you know, you you need to be here for the meeting. Could we do it virtually? No, no, that won't work. Yeah. So that was pre-COVID. So yeah, we'll spend 500 pounds on return train tickets and you will attend the meeting. And now um, we're far more confident about um, it's okay to have a Teams or a Zoom. So it has, I hope I'm answering the question here. (laughs) Um, But I think, yeah, things have changed in that we are much happier to use the technology. We're no longer scared of it, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but I think also there is a, at the same time, there's a real hunger for face to face. You know, you, you can, I mean, I'm doing some face to face with a client tomorrow morning. It's just a a one-to-one and we could easily do it. We could easily do it virtually. Uh, so it is an extra two hours travel for me in and out of London, but um yeah we it, we're both really looking forward to it because we've all our previous sessions have been online so i think there's a real hunger for for face to face and yet we are we've accepted 
that an awful lot of business communication has to be has to be through this two dimensional form. Yeah, yeah, uh, I think you're right. And what I, you know, and and I think in a lot of ways, it's 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 kind of nice to have this, uh, you know, this tool that we didn't have before. At least we were probably afraid of it, right? I think COVID forced us to use this tool more. So senior managers now were learning how to operate Teams and Zoom and and all this technology with. Uh, and there's there's a lot of been funny you know stories where people have like a strange background or they've done some animation they can't figure out how to turn off. There's a there was a lawyer in the U.S. that had a cat face on, and uh, he was appearing before a judge and he couldn't figure out how to turn it off. Which you know again I can just see senior managers, guys that have been you know have always had people do things for them now have to figure out all this technology themselves in the, in the early yeah. stages of COVID. Well now two and a half years into it, we're sort of used to it. This is like how we do business. And so I think it gives us a lot more options. When I was in, um, when I was working in corporate, I sp- we used to fly over every month to Europe for an eight hour meeting. And then we'd fly, I'd fly back. So I'd go over eight hour meeting and I'd fly back. And that just was normal. It was normal once a month flying over to Europe for an eight hour meeting, but we could have done and this all this wasn't available then, but this is such a powerful way to be able to have those discussions and then, you know, without having to do all the traveling and all the, as you know, yeah. the, the traveling is, uh, there's all, there's, all, you go through all these different things to get to a place and it's, it's usually, and it's stressful by the time you finally get there and have the meeting. But, mm-hmm. but I think you're right. I think people are now are longing to have those face to face. And I know like we had our first, uh, you know, industry, we had a big industry conference and it was so exciting. Like right after COVID, we, everybody was like so glad to see each other. We hadn't seen each other in three years and it's kind of neat to have that face to face. But so, you know, as we go into like virtual presentations now and virtual meetings, what are some like like mistakes that you've seen or, or things that are people are doing generally wrong when it comes to it? What are, what are some what are some uh, worst practices that you've seen or people have talked about? Yeah, that's a that's a good good question. Because there has been definitely there's been some improvements yeah. in the last two and a half years from when it first started, people most people were getting uh, acquainted with it. But I would say now uh the biggest is is energy mm. and having a conversation with the camera. So yes, uh quite a lot of um people could have infinitely better microphones for instance or less echoey space and there's things you can do about that but the big one i think still you know i i I attended quite a big conference um a few weeks ago i won't say what it who who it was but and it was just gobsmacking how you know you know because it sounds like you know i in my position i don't want to um slag people off but so boring so and and lack of energy and uh uh, across the board pretty much you know and this and you think well you have to fake it a bit it is awkward you know you talk to a you're doing a keynote or you're doing a a webinar and you're not you know you're not employed to be a tv presenter and suddenly you sort of effectively are yeah but you have to, you know, you have to look at the camera and you have to put in that little bit of energy because, yes, it doesn't feel authentic. But then I, I'll say to people, because they'll say, oh, Jack, you know, it's not very authentic if I start putting in energy because this is how I feel. I'm hating this. So this is me authentic because like, this is awful. And then you, you say, yeah, but when when you finish and I ask you how it was and you'll go, oh, right, it was a bit rubbish and I, I could have done this better and I could have done that. Then you come to life. Yeah. You stop presenting. And that version of you is the real you. We'll be right back after a quick word from our sponsors. Leadership skills are like any other skills. You need to practice them to get better at them. Best-selling leadership author John S. Rennie knows this. That's why he's written a new book called You Have the Watch. It's a guided journal for leaders designed to take you through an entire year of leadership training. By the end of the year, you will master 50 of the most important leadership skills. If you want to have a greater impact on the results and people in your organization, go to youhavethewatch.com and pick up your copy today. 
This podcast is brought to you by Jeremy Clevenger Fitness. As a high-performing leader, you know that leadership isn't about telling people what to do. It's about leading by example. And for most people, the one area they are lacking when it comes to leading by example is their health and fitness. By improving your health and fitness, every other area of your life improves. But how do you get and stay fit as a busy leader? Well, you do what you've always done. You hire the best person for the job. Now, don't struggle on your own. Put Jeremy Clevenger on your team. Jeremy will work with you to help take your physique, mindset, nutritional habits, and more to the next level with his step-by-step, all-inclusive coaching program. Now, I've worked with Jeremy for the past year, and I'm in the best shape of my life. So if you want to step up your game, reach out to Jeremy at jeremyclevengerfitness.com to find out more and get your initial consultation scheduled with him today. This episode is brought to you by the Fraternity of Excellence. The Fraternity of Excellence is an online and real-world community for men who are looking to improve in all areas of their lives. The men of FOE are working together to become better husbands, fathers, and leaders at work and in their communities. They live by a simple philosophy, as iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. Now, I've been a member for more than three years, and for me, I finally found a brotherhood of men that I was missing from my time in the military. Now, I love being around guys who are dedicated to becoming a better version of themselves. So if you're interested in becoming a man of excellence as well, go to fraternityofexcellence.com, or you can reach out directly to me to learn more. And if you were talking to if you were talking to a group of fifty people in a room, would you talk to them like? Um, yeah, so yeah. Let's move to slide number six. Just a moment. <laughs> oh yes. Oh, just the way you're doing it right now is what I saw in the early stages of COVID. Was was that you know the you didn't get the full face. You got part of their head or the ear. They were looking at another screen and and uh, and yeah uh, yeah. I think you're right. And they forgot that. You know, the camera is actually another person. So the camera is is the person you're trying to talk to. And it is, and it's hard. The, eyes to, the audience. Yeah, the target, it's the audience. And one of the things as a speaker and a teacher, I did a lot of virtual speaking and teaching during that time. And one of the things is I'm an, I, I tend to be an empathetic speaker. I, 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 I try to sense the crowd, you know, who's listening, who's not paying attention. I move to the other side of the room when I see some people kind of nodding off and I try to, you know, so, but when, when you're doing it in, in a, in a virtual setting, it's it's we're going to talk about this it's 2d right and so you have all these little mm-hmm. little boxes and it's really hard for me to sense like how people are feeling or how are they responding are they are they paying attention because you have all these little tiny boxes and it's really hard to tell um and uh so i i struggled in the beginning until i sort of said okay well i've got a sort of I'm not an actor, but I have to act in front of like if like a person mm. was there as part of it was it was hard to get used to. But once I did, it was like, OK, I can do this now. I, I understand how to do it. But um, yeah, I like what you talked about, this idea of how do you create a 3D version of yourself in a 2D world? Now, this is something that I've never heard anyone talking about. So how can you talk about this idea of like kind of leaping out of the screen. And you also talk about this idea of a power of random. So I was kind of curious, how do we become a 3D version in a presentation versus a 2D flat, uh, you know, you know, a box on a, uh, on a, yeah, you know, yeah. on a zoom call, if you will. Well, one thing is that you, um, when you were in a, when you, as we've been here for the last 20 minutes, we're, we're in our, we're in our boxes and, and it can become very easy. There's actually a um, I'm trying to remember the name of the actor. Uh, damn, damn, I can't remember his name. Anyway, it, it'll come to me. Uh, who does this brilliantly? You don't. The more that you can put the animation in, but it has to be re, you know it has to come from an authentic place. But it you know I mean I'm I'm quite animated. Doesn't mean everyone one is, but there's it's you've got to in. In face to face, you don't have to make an effort to mm. be human. You you just are. Yeah, ninety nine percent of us do not have to make an effort to be human in in a face to face. But in virtual, you have to f- fake some of that. I'm being I'm being human. And sometimes, you know, when you're with your friends or colleagues, you don't need to worry about that because you just do it. You're comfortable in the online environment. You get each other, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And there's laughter, there's banter. But otherwise, you have to add some, sprinkle it in there Mm. deliberately uh, and enjoy and 
enjoy the audience and give that impression of that that's where you are. So one thing I do, for instance, at the beginning of a, a session, if I'm working with a group of people, is I'll get them to do an exercise which forces them away from the camera and forces them into doing something that's slightly random and a little bit, oh, we're we're moving around, I'm moving around the office now. I'm, this is, I hadn't planned this at all. He's asking me to find some things or he's asking me to do something. Or, you know, um, I've had people up, I said, okay, we're going to, I'm going to play a bit of music and we're all going to dance to the music. Uh, I hope this is not freaking out people as I say this. We're going (laughs) to dance to the music in different styles, in different styles. Not because that's how we're going to do the whole session, but I just want to help people free up and move away from I've been looking at this bloody thing for mm. hours after hours after hours, and you are an interruption in my day. And that's one of the biggest problems you we have. So typically, if you're presenting, the person you're presenting to, before they were watching you, they were watching something else, watching mm. a Word document, an Excel sheet, a Facebook video or something, emailing, blah, blah, blah. You come in, you're an interruption. Yeah. And they look again at the screen. And then you start talking and it's chat chat and here's a slide and here's another slide. Yeah, yeah. And and they've had years of it as well now. And then they go, okay, I'll finish. I'll turn off my mute, I'll mute because that's a polite thing to do. And if I look occasionally up like this, it looks like I'm watching. I'll just do my email, finish my email. And if something interesting happens, it says something interesting, I'll listen for a bit and I'll get back to that. And that's and, and so if you can pull them away from that into that's why i emphasize grabbing the audience is really super important there are occasional organizations where they go really we don't want to be grabbed (laughs) we we expect everyone i've had this we expect people for instance to do training and do their work at the same time oh yeah i've had people say i've you know that's what we're expected to do so they don't want, to be, but that's a my, tiny minority. Most people would love to be grabbed. Most people would love to be drawn in and for their time to have real value and to get something meaningful from the conversation. So, yes, it's partly the energy and the intent of, I've got to put a bit of fizz in here. Yeah, but not, I mean, because uh, I can imagine there's lots, might be a few people listening going, well, I'm not a fizz person, really. Yeah. Well, not naturally. It's no, absolutely. You but you put in the you as if you were talking to people you get on with in a, uh, you know, in a round of table, having a coffee and a chat. Put that person who is passionate about sharing a story, put that person on the screen. And that is enough. But that's a hell of a lot more fizz than most people do. And then the next thing is it has to have you have to be clear on the value to your audience. So the audience goes, ah, oh, it's going to be worth my while. I'm going to get a lot from this. I'll, I'll, I'll listen. Yeah, yeah. Because I think, you know, in a, in a in a physical meeting or a physical presentation, you're going to have people that they, they have no choice but to but to pay attention. They're sitting in a chair. If if they look at their phone, everyone's going to see it. So they they're sort of forced to pay attention. But I think mm-hmm. you, I think more it's more difficult uh, if you're trying to present virtually and they have their computer monitor here and then they just bring up their email right beside your thing and they're just doing their email and they, and they nod a couple of times and they pretend like they're listening. And it's really hard for the presenter to know that they're, they, they've they completely you know disconnected from the conversation. So I think more than even in a physical uh, presentation, the virtual, you have to you have to keep keep their attention uh, if you want them not to just jump on, you know, their email list or their to-do list mm. or what have you, uh, because this can be easily distracted. Because this is, you know, they're looking at their screen where they do all their work. And then, you know, and then your face is there and you're you're bothering them through their work day, right? <laughs> so yeah. I got to get back to my work. I'm going to minimize That's it. it. That's it. Yeah, and you know that if you, uh, you know, if you mention, uh, for for instance, if you say, "Oh, and uh, and Churchill did this," da 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 da, that half of them, if they are listening, will start going on Wikipedia. Oh, that's interesting. Oh Oh. yeah, yeah, I've seen that. You know, because they can, they can, they can go anywhere in the world. Yeah, while listening to you, and that's that's actually that's okay. You need to embrace a bit of that. 
I um I did a couple of uh, training sessions this during COVID where we used um we used some of the surveys and we actually we asked a question to have people answer in the chat as a way to get them to actively participate in the conversation mm -hmm. and as a way so we would we you know we I would present for a period then we would ask a question and then stop them and say okay you know ants you know in the chat tell me what you think about this you know this issue and and so people. So in other words, we may we brought in some uh, interactive activities. Uh, this is more training than presentations, but as a way to get them actively participating. Actively in, participating. In, so we so we use the the uh, there's like a there's like a poll uh, setup that you can do in Zoom, and we used, we used polls and we used uh, questions with at, you know put your answers in the chat. But it was a way to get people actively participating versus just. You know, uh, when's this over? You know, I've got when's it finishing? Yeah, thing. yeah. Thank you, John. Yeah, the and the active participation is a huge part of it. I mean, the science suggests that if you can get your audience actively participating in that first five minutes, whether it's via chat or getting them to do something, even if they say, "Okay, uh, I'm going to be talking about this," just make a little right on a note piece of paper something you would like to get from the next twenty minutes. And they all write it down. Okay, can so can you actually share that now? Can yeah. You share that in chat, and they share it in chat, and suddenly you you as presenter have got a load of useful data from them, which you can use during the the presentation, and they have contributed. They feel part of it, and they're far far more likely to stay engaged. And you've sort of broken through the two D, yeah, to make yeah. it a bit more green. Yeah. I love that. That's great. Um, you you talk about in your book uh, nerves, and, and it's interesting because I think we've we've had some different speakers on here talking about uh, our, our different guests talking about public speaking and nerves. Uh, how is 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 it, is it any different in in the virtual space that uh, where you have to work on uh, you know how do you how do you coach up people dealing with the, the nervousness of doing a presentation virtually? Yeah, I think it's really interesting. It's it's because it's changed. It's changed quite a bit. The people still get really nervous, but I meet quite a few people who say I'm much less nervous on virtual than I am face to face. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is that they read out their presentations. It's that because I, I think the major reason that we get nervous is because of a fundamental need that human beings have to be in control. So in the early days of Zoom and Teams, uh, you know, when COVID first arrived and we were really trying to embrace the technology, people were a lot more nervous because they're going, oh, my God, I'm setting up a breakout room. Who knows where people will go, if they'll ever return or whether the computer will blow up. And then it didn't. And they went, oh, it worked. That was OK. And then they became had a sense of control. And then people started going, you know what I can do? I could put. I'm trying to look for a piece of paper now, but I can put bits of paper on blue tack around my camera. I could just, yeah, I just, I could just say it. I just read it without any mistakes and I stay in control. And that is deadly. Um, so, but the nerves thing is one, uh, it's big part of it is control. So if you can, I say to people, and I'm aware of time, if I, I say to people, if you can look at what, areas of this presentation you don't feel you have control over mm. look for because it's the lack of control that is making you nervous mm. it might be i i'm nervous because i don't feel i have enough knowledge mm. all right look at that because usually people actually do have enough knowledge and they go oh i have got enough knowledge all right what else is what else is making you nervous um the ceo is going to be there the ceo all right. Can you do anything about the CEO being there? No, I can't. All right. So they're definitely going to be there. Yes, they are. All right. So uh, do they want you to be good? Yes, they do really want me to be good. Are they human beings? Yes, they are. All right. The other bit, do you worry about their seniority or whatever? Accept. Mm -hmm. Do your job. Do the presentation well, but accept. So there's a thing of... Can you do something about the thing that you feel out of control on? If you can, do something about it or put it off to another time or just accept. Mm. This is, this is, there's nothing I can do about this. 
I just have to to uh, roll with it because I, I know for sure that when you start going, I cannot be nervous. It mm. is a sign of weakness and feeble mindedness. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, that's when that's when it all goes wrong. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I know for me, like. Like when I'm right, right about to go to speak, I'm like, do, you know, I'm like, I, got, I use a lot of statistics, you know, I'll I'll mention a percentage of this or this many people. But then I'm like, I got to look at those and, and I, I have to have those written down because sometimes in the heat of the moment, I'll just forget a number or, you know what I mean? So it was nice to, for me, for I, if I double check all those little statistical numbers, I feel more comfortable because I know I, I can, I can reach and grab it and I've got it in my head. You know, that that's like the last thing I do before I, when I'm preparing is like, it's, it's remembering all the little numbers and things. Oh, I, I think that's brilliant. Yeah. Just yeah. to have a few numbers up. I mean, look, oh, I'm cheating. I'm going to cheat here. I put, I did actually print out some notes, uh, which yeah. just to remind myself of things. And then I forgot, I made a, a beginner's mistake that the notes are in such small writing. I can't actually read them anyway. <laughs> Um, well, I have terrible eyesight, so so all my notes are printed really large. So because I, <laughs> there I have we go. bad eyesight, but I've learned to do that. Yeah. Okay. So. Well, that's a little note for everyone. It's a deliberate mistake by myself. Just <laughs> make the make the words big enough so you can actually read them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So that's why I have my notes are all really big, um, so that uh, I don't have to wear my reading glasses. I can sort of look like I don't wear glasses, but I do wear reading so <laughs> but uh, so I, you know we we really it's like a lot lot there's a lot in this i think the book is fantastic i went through it all and uh there's just so many good um you 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 touch on so many different things like uh technical tips um how to structure your presentation how to avoid um you know this death by virtual meeting so how to how to um how to get people engaged when they're appearing distanced or distant or distracted disengaged so there's so many tips in this uh that i really i'm encouraging people that you know if you're listening in is to pick up this book because i think there's a lot of lessons in here and it can really help you you know become a better virtual speaker whether it's whether you're doing training or just having meetings i think you've got a lot of really good information in this book that i really encourage leaders to to take a look at it Jack, how can people find out? Uh, and I understand too that you've got this. Um, now you've got an online course coming on board. Tell us a little bit about the online course. Yeah, so I've got. I've just started this online course. So uh, there's three versions of it. You can get the free little taster version, or you can uh, buy straight into it, which is a is a series of about about thirty short videos and a book. Plus, there's various supporting materials and exercises, and you know all the usual standard stuff. And also, what I've done for the videos is I've uh, I've got four uh, four random characters who are uh, sort of idiot presenters yes. who sort of demonstrate how not to do it on each on each video. And I play those I play those characters. So I've tried to add a bit of humour uh, and comedy to it as well. And then the third third version is that every month I do a stream, a live stream where people can join. And uh, if they've got a big presentation coming up, they can just ask me some questions or, or whatever. And that comes as as standard as part of it. Oh, that's and great, the yeah. book is available on uh, Amazon and it will be shortly available on other uh, book sites, those book sites. Uh, and you can get it in the States and most of Europe, obviously the UK as well uh and india i think and japan oh it's outstanding yeah i've watched some of the videos and, and at least the intro video and they're and they're it's very funny so i i really encourage how can people find out about the videos where do they go so if you go to my website which is standupanddeliver.co.uk uh and across the top menu you'll see about five five different items and one of those is the online academy Go into the online academy, and as I say, you can either just have a quick look at the taster where you get some free videos and materials, or or go and uh, uh, en enroll. Okay, very good. We're going to put links in the show notes for those resources, and I do encourage people to take a look at this book, Virtual Presentation Mastery. Uh, it's good. It's got a lot of good material. It's it's great source document for you. It's, everything is sort of in one book, in one place that you can look through it. And I think it's a, 
It's a fantastic piece of work, and and I really appreciate uh, Jackie coming on the show and sharing this uh, this information. This has been fantastic. I really do appreciate it. Not at all, John. I've really enjoyed it. Thank you. Thanks again. Well, that's it for today. Thank you for listening to Deep Leadership. If you like this podcast, please subscribe and share so we can continue to build a world with better bosses. Until next time, this is John Rennie saying take care and lead well. Thank you for listening to Deep Leadership. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all you do. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. For more information and updates, please visit our website at www.deepleadershippodcast.com or johnsrenny.com. Until next time, take care. Welcome, explorers of the human experience. This is Let's Talk Soul, and I'm your host, Claudia Monticelli. We're not afraid of the great mysteries of existence here. Soul versus consciousness, we're on it. Spirituality versus science, we've got that covered too. Join us in navigating these profound topics with wisdom, curiosity, and a dash of audacity. Whether you're a spiritual veteran or just starting your journey, Let's Talk Soul is your passport to the unknown. Let's Talk Soul, diving into the depths of the human spirit. Subscribe now wherever you get your podcasts. Electric Acid. Welcome to Tuning Into Sound Wellbeing where we harmonize your mind, body, and soul. I'm Amanda, your sound therapy expert. And I'm Stephen, the curious explorer uncovering the mysteries of sound. Together we explore vibrations, frequencies, and the power of sound therapy and tuning forks. Discover ancient wisdom, reduce stress, and tune into a healthier life. Subscribe to Tuning Into Sound Wellbeing today.